There are two ways to mount the floor extension to the truck. The extension was made to work with either option without any alteration. There's the standard weld-on method. This extension is either painted or galvanized steel. If any part has a galvanized finish, make sure you follow all of the safety protocols for grinding and welding galvanized surfaces. Refer to the welding stainless steel to galvanize section in the manual for detailed instructions. There's also the bolt-on method. This method requires holes in the rear sill. Usually these holes are pre-drilled. However, if the rear seal does not have pre-drilled holes, refer to the bolt-on floor extension section in the installation manual for a dimensional drawing. Regardless of how it's installed, the depth of the floor extension and the depth of the dock bumpers should be the same, with the exception of the walk ramp ready version. This version has an inset floor extension that's narrower than the dock bumpers. It can either be welded or bolted on. The standard weld-on floor extension, which is the most common option, will be used for the purpose of this specific installation. If more detailed information is needed for the bolt-on method, refer to the installation manual. Remember to check the vehicle's owner's manual for any special requirements prior to welding on the truck. If you're installing a galvanized floor extension, start by grinding off the galvanizing in the weld areas. Remember to wear a protective breathing device to protect yourself from the grinding dust. Next, find and mark the middle of the truck's rear sill. Use a marker to mark the center of the floor extension. Also, mark the finish weld locations for a repeating 2-inch continuous weld with a 4-inch gap. Make your marks from both ends inward towards the middle. You can now position the floor extension against the rear sill. Due to its weight, which can exceed 200 pounds, use a forklift to hold it in place. Make sure the center mark on the floor extension is aligned and flush with the center mark on the truck's rear sill. Spray the rear sill with an anti-spatter spray to help prevent weld spatter from sticking. Whether you're welding or grinding, take precautions to prevent sparks from igniting any nearby combustible items. Next, tack weld the floor extension in place. Work from the middle outward, making sure the top of the extension remains flush with the rear sill. Most floor extensions have a natural bow and need to be straightened as they're installed. Remember to wear a protective breathing device to protect yourself from welding fumes if you're attaching a galvanized extension. The tack welds must be strong enough to hold the weight of the floor extension, which can be up to 250 pounds. If your tack welds are too small, they may break, resulting in injury. Place a level on the floor extension to verify that it is parallel to the truck bed. Make any adjustments before installing the dock bumpers next. You can now tack weld both dock bumpers to the floor extension. Remember, if this is the walk ramp ready version, the dock bumpers extend an additional four inches from the floor extension. Finish the dock bumper installation by welding them to the floor extension with a continuous weld. Also, weld the top and side of the dock bumpers to the truck body post. You can now finish welding the floor extension to the rear sill using 2-inch continuous welds. Also, weld the bottom of the floor extension to the rear sill in 7 or 8 places. To help strengthen the rear sill when a heavy load is placed on the floor extension, Add several strengthening plates between the rear sill and the truck bed frame. These plates are not supplied with the lift gate. Finally, you can install and weld the side gussets using a continuous weld across the top and side of the plate. If this method does not work with your specific installation, other methods can be found in the installation manual. You can now continue to the next phase of the installation for your MTU GLR model lift gate.